Coma Cosmos Serpent. Two blue, two green, three other for yet another good Simic card. 6-6 six, six, Legendary Serpent. This spell can't be countered. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature token named Coma's Coil. Sacrifice another serpent. Choose one. Tap target permanent. Its activated abilities can't be activated this turn. Coma Cosmos Serpent gains indestructible until end of turn. This is a really strong Simic card, y'all. We're going to talk about our new legendary serpent in EDH, what I think would go well in a commander deck led by Coma, and a good commander deck that I think this would fit perfectly into the 99 of. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. We're going to talk about Coma, Cosmos Serpent in EDH, and some of the decks that I think it would go well in. But first, if you would, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you like the video. By the end of it, let's look at another good Simic Commander card. So we've got the Cosmos Serpent. Very expensive, okay? We've got a seven cost card here for a 6-6. Six, six. Now it can't be countered, which is really nice. And if it can just survive until one opponent's turn, we're gonna get a 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature token. I love that this says each upkeep. It's kind of nutty that it says each upkeep. When I first read it, I was like, okay, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 3-3, three, three. that's nice. So if it survives all the way around, you're gonna get nine power on the board. And one of the patrons in the Discord went, uh-uh, no, 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 no. That says each upkeep. You get a 3-3 three, three, and then a 3-3 three, three, and then a 3-3, three, three, and then on your turn, you get another 3-3. Three, three. And the whole time, all you have to do to make this creature indestructible is sack one of those 3-3. Three, three. So your opponents are going to have to cast like more than one removal spell or ace coma as soon as it hits the battlefield. That's pretty much their option because past that, the serpent is going to get pretty nuts. And I like the flavor win of that too with this giant cosmo serpent that is just all-seeing, all-powerful, all-knowing. I don't know that it's omniscient, but it's a very powerful serpent as far as the lore goes. I do know that. And as it gets older, it just keeps growing out of control and removing it gets further and further out of reach and you've got to exile it at a certain point because there's too many 3-3s three and they all will give Coma indestructible or it's tapping down some artifacts or even Planeswalkers. You can turn off Planeswalkers activated abilities with Coma. It is kind of nutty. I want to go through some of the cards that if you want Coma as your commander would go really well in the deck and then I want to talk about a deck that I think Coma would be really great in the 99 of. So let's get into some cards that would go in this deck. Obviously Parallel Lives. Four mana if an effect would put one or more tokens onto the battlefield under your control. It puts twice that many of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. So each upkeep we're getting an extra 3-3. Doubling Season does something very similar. It's that in effect would create one or more tokens under your control. It creates twice of those tokens instead. Plus, if you've got some counter strategies in there with plus one, plus one counters, or whatever kind of counters are going on your permanence, doubling seasonal help with that as well. Second Harvest is not normally a card that I recommend for decks like this because it's kind of, you know, iffy on turns where a board wipe has just happened. Honestly, for each token you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. That's not really useful when your board is empty, but I think that Coma has a better chance of being on the battlefield constantly creating tokens because it can keep itself indestructible that's huge and so i think it gives second harvest more validity in this deck beastmaster ascension is one of my favorite cards for a creature based token deck like this because for three mana all you've got to get is seven attack triggers to happen because whenever a creature you control attacks you're putting a quest counter on it and once you have seven on there you get this plus five plus five anthem this enormous anthem and so all all of your three threes are going to become eight eights. It's just ridiculous. This is an easy enchantment, I would think, in this deck to turn on because if Coma gets all the way back around to your turn again, you've got what four three threes on the battlefield already. That's pretty pretty easy to get up to seven at that point. And then you run stuff like Overwhelming Stampede for five mana creatures you control gain trample and plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. With Coma on the battlefield, that's six. Everything's getting plus six plus six. Everything's attacking with trample. That's a pretty hard hitter. Kamal is also great. 
great in this deck as a high CMC kind of drop and finish. Because you're playing Simic, you're not going to have a hard time ramping and getting to your 7 cost commander. Then you've got this 8 cost legendary creature that can come in. At the beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control are getting plus 3, plus 3, gaining trample in a turn. Plus you can turn lands into more attackers, but really at this point we just love having this gigantic creature drop on the battlefield, give everything this plus three, plus three anthem, and just start swinging away. Since we're in blue and it does check for our upkeeps, Coma does, Paradox Haze is a great card in this. We're gonna enchant ourselves, and at the beginning of our first upkeep each turn, that player gets an additional upkeep. So three mana, Paradox Haze just says, all right, you get an additional three, three. How about that? Looking at Coma the Serpent, I love having an additional upkeep because we're going to get more and more three threes to protect Coma from anything that's going to destroy, not exile, but destroy. And we're going to be able to turn off our opponent's stuff that's got activated abilities. Sphinx of the Second Sun is very similar, going to give us an additional upkeep. We get an additional beginning phase at the beginning of our post-combat main phase, so we get to untap, upkeep, and draw yet again within our own turn to create an additional 3-3, get an additional card, and we're good to go. Rampant Growth, obviously, look, we need to ramp. This is a seven cost commander. We don't wanna have to cast it more than once or twice, so we need to protect it, and we need to ramp. So you're gonna run Rampant Growth, you're gonna run Cultivate. These are all pretty straightforward. You need to run Growth Spiral. This is the kind of card that has to go in a commander deck where your commander is six mana, seven mana, eight mana. Kind of ridiculous, but you need to make sure that you've got ways in this deck to ramp all the way up. Simic Signet, you can put it on rocks. Obviously stuff like Soul Ring, Mana Vault, any of that kind of stuff, if you're gonna run it, that's gonna help. But there are cheaper ways. Simic Signet, Growth Spiral, Cultivate, one of those. Also to reduce that mana cost, Command Beacon. Tap it, sack it, put the commander into the hand from the command zone. Once you've cast it once for seven, the next time it's going to be nine. Eh, it's getting up there. You don't want to just cast this. You want to have some mana open and protect it with some counter spells, something like that. So command beacon it into your hand. Then you can play it from your hand for seven again. Leave that mana open so that you can protect it with a nice little counter spell. Those exile effects are what's going to be aiming at coma and you want to make sure that you're able to counter that kind of stuff. So I said at the beginning that I wanted to talk about a commander that I thought coma would go great in the 99 of because if you want my honest opinion, I don't really really like Coma as your commander when you've got a card like AC Tyrant of Gyre Strait. Now don't get me wrong, if you want to play Coma as your commander, dope. I think the creature is awesome. It is an excellent choice. Like I said, make sure you can ramp, make sure you can recast it with things like Command Beacon, run some counter spells so you can counter that exile effect when it happens. But if you just want to build like a crazy serpent deck, go with AC. I've already got a video on the channel that goes over AC and a couple of different builds for it, so make sure you go check that out. But for six mana, you're getting a 5-5 five, five serpent. You can play an additional land, so it does the ramp thing that I talked about. And whenever landers, land is in entering the battlefield, you're getting to draw a card. So it's got velocity, it's got ramp built in, and then you can use a creature tutor. Go find Coma, play Coma. With a deck like this, also run things like Serpent of Yawning Depths. Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, Serpents you control can't be blocked, except by Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. That's huge. All of these giant creatures that you would run in a deck like this, just attacking through unstopped, that's awesome. That's exactly what we want. You can also run things like Whelming Wave, because we're going to run giant sea creature tribal, I guess. Two blue, two other, return all creatures to their owner's hands, except for krakens, leviathans, octopuses, and serpents. That's exactly what you want to be running in this deck. So I just wanted to give one alternative. If you just want to play Coma in EDH, but you really want a super strong deck, I'd say go with AC. But if you want to build a super like flavorful deck or something with all this Norse mythology built in, go with Coma. Just make sure you can ramp it, make sure you can protect it, and make sure you've got a lot of those payoffs so that you're getting a lot of those 3-3 tokens as often as you can. Those are my thoughts on Coma. Let's close the book. Thanks so much for watching. I love that Wizards has been giving us a lot of really cool serpents and leviathans and krakens and octopuses, oh my, lately because that's a really cool creature type and they've really done a good job of designing them so that they're very powerful. AC was almost too powerful, kind of ridiculously powerful, but Coma, I love it because the mana cost sort of balances out the whole fact they've got the spell can't be countered on there so you know that you're not just paying seven mana into the void at the very 
very least it's going to stick and then they're going to have to kill it that turn or exile it once our 3-3 three, three serpents get rolling. Like I said, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button on your way out. It lets me know to make more videos like this. Other than that, I'm tapped out and I'll catch you later.